Hey, how you doing? I'm Peter from Arandan. I just published my latest track Anaximander and Aximenes on Bandcamp. You can find the link below in the description of this video. I made it entirely using the modular synth right behind me. And in this patch notes video, I'm going to walk you through one of the sounds that I use in the, the track to see how I made it. It's a sort of a rhythmic effect in the treble region and I'm using a feedback loop to generate lots of noise and then a granular effect on top of that to get some sort of rhythm going and I'll show you how to do it, how to start it up and how to keep it going. So join me on the modeler side and let's get cracking. There you have it, crazy rhythmic effect in the travel region, sound I'm using on my latest track. Um, you see me do a couple of things and I want to take a step back to walk you through it step by step. Let's tune down the noise for a second. I love that. Ah, there we go. Initial settings, delay on maximum coherence all the way counterclockwise. Melotus Virgil is the granular effect I'm using to uh, build up the rhythmic effect, which you noticed because I was wiggling mostly there. Counterclockwise, the coherence is all the way to the incoherent side, which is what I want because I'm building up a drone initially, as you heard. And if you turn it all the way to the other side, it becomes a sort of delay. So instead of a drone, you will get a ta -ta 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 rhythm already, but not a very desirable one for my track. So that's why I'm starting with the drone and I'm building the rhythm in an entirely different way. So Melotus Virgil, the granular effect, takes as the input the output of the mixer. Um, first channel coming in into the mixer is here one from Vales, which is actually coming from the other rack, which is a parcel pizza. Um, sort of uh, crazy sound coming out of it. It's a very good oscillator actually. Um, its envelope comes from Zadar. It's a back to front envelope to, so you get a warp sort of effect which works really well to build up a drone. It's much better than using a ping, so a regular uh, envelope um, because that will be too recognizable um, when it starts feeding back. So that's the input sound, uh, line one. Line two comes these two guys come from 
the melodious version, obviously, because we're building a feedback loop. So we're taking a mix of the original sound and uh, output and sending it back into the melodious version. Now, I want to break here for a little while because um, this is just one way of building it up. Um, the, as you can see, the output of the melodious version is obviously going to the mixer and then these two big guys, the, uh, the stackables, are going to my filter here. This filter I'm using as a high pass so that I can keep everything nicely in the treble region. It works much better in the mix this way. Output goes into my main controls for volume and then straight into the ES9. So forget about this for a while. These two guys are the output. So what am I doing with this one? I'm, I've got my Melotus Fergio all the way in a, dry, in a wet mode, so I'm taking the wet and sending that to the output so that I get a drone without uh, any trace of the original sound except if it's been mangled by uh, the granular effect. Um, you can do this differently. So if I take out one of these guys and plug them in here in the mixer instead, what you will get is that the output consists of the mix of the original sound and the output of the Melotus Fergio. Oh, really Peter? Give me a break! Let's take a step back and look at it in a diagram to clear it all up. So, the dry sound is coming from Basel Pizza into the mixer. I simplified lots of stuff, so I kept it out the VCA. I'm just using one arrow to show the flow of the sound instead of two for uh, stereo signals. Just to keep it as simple as possible so you see how the sound is going. The output of the mixer goes into the input of Melotus Fergio and the output of Melotus Fergio goes back into the mixer to create a feedback loop. Now, in the track, I'm using the output of Melotus Fergio straight to the output for recording performance and so on. This is actually a mixer for the input of Melotus Fergio. We can do it the other way around and instead of having an input mixer, using an output mixer. In that case, we still take the dry sound, which goes the mix goes still into Melotus Fergio, the output still goes into the mixer again to create the feedback loop, but instead of taking the output of Melotus Fergio and sending it to, uh, to the output for recording and performance, we take the output of the mixer. In this case, you can mix the dry signal again into the actual mix, which you can hear on the recording, um, which can be useful for some cases. Now, if you want full flexibility, you can do both at the same time. So we have an input mixer which takes the dry sound and the feedback loop and the output goes into the mixer of Melotus Fergio. That's how I'm using it at the moment. What we also do is we take an output mixer which takes the same signals being the dry sound and the output of Melotus Fergio and that output is then sent into the actual output for recording and performance. The advantage here is that you can have a different mix between the input what is actually going into Melotus Fergio for processing and the output where you can add again the dry signal if you would like to do so. Good, now that is clarified, let's take a look at what this Peter guy is babbling about in the meantime in the video. Feedback patch. My feedback patch is just taking the dirty sound out of a Melotus Fergio straight to the output. That's it. So what do I do then? I open up the VCA, you will see it starts pinging every so often. There you go. Then I turn up the mixer as well to send something into the Melotus Fergio. And the main thing that I send is the feedback itself and a very little of the sound. And that's enough to start triggering a drone because the feedback is already kicking in at the moment. So I let it build up a little bit. The notes from the pizza are going up and down in, um, in frequency, so it builds a nice sort of texture. I can increase this a little bit so it's more pronounced. See, it starts floating around into the mix as well. And when I've got this nice drone going on, I decrease the delay really send it into a uh, heavy feedback territory. There we go.
at this point I reverse the positions of these two because now the actual input signal is triggering the crazy feedback and then you can hear the original signal going all crazy when they are floating about <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and as soon as you think like, ah, oh, okay, good bit of noise going on, then we bring in the ground or effect. So the sparseness is actually the size of the grains. All the way on the left, you've got a very little grains and lots of them, so you get more or less a regular sound. If you turn it to the right, you get very few grains and you get this sort of uh, chopped up effect. Of course this is way too much, that's not what we want, but just to give you an impression. And it's a little bit of searching where do I want to be. Sounding pretty nice already. As soon as you're there, just crank the delay back up and the coherence and the sparseness all the way. So, what this is doing is fixing the sound in a very coherent state. So, now you get this delay going on, and then sending this back to the small grains turns it into a fixed feed, which Repeats and repeats and repeats. So that's where the rhythm comes from. There you go. Now we can start playing. That's still the notes going into it to add some more. If we just decrease the delay a little bit, just decrease it a bit. And the new notes don't use the same rhythm exactly as the other one and it becomes a bit more interesting and then I can tell you this. Okay, I just wanted to repeat without any more information and go crazier and crazier or you say ah give me some new notes now I yeah, won't we'll start it in. And this way you can evolve your sound as much as you like. And if you're all fed up with it or went too crazy, like this for example. So, ah no! My rhythm is all gone! Just try it again. To something decent, increase this one. again into rhythmic distance for the rest of the track as much as you'd like. And it's a fun way to play around with it, you know, if you take the tone, that's sort of a pass filter on the left low pass, uh, on the right high pass. If you crank it up too much it starts adding some crazy frequency itself. So it's a nice way to add some variation live. Obviously, if you go down, it starts conflicting with the high pass filter here, but if you don't have this filter, then you can use it for a bass as well. Whoa, you just blow bad at you.
I can continue like this for hours, but <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Anyway, that was an introduction to how I built this sound for my track. Link to the track is down below. Listen to it, follow me, subscribe, you know the deal. And the next track, hopefully, coming up in a month or so. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep myself busy with another uh, few patch notes videos on the triple bass coming up next, and uh, on the <laughs> sort of kind of cheap theremin sound I'm uh, using, it, which for which I'm actually using this filter in the resonant mode. In the meantime, though, take care and see you next time. Bye.